Jakob Ingebrigtsen gets the win and got a whole bunch of letters by this victory. I'm looking at it right now. World lead, national record, diamond league record, and PB 346.46. They were mentioning the European record on the broadcast in part because Steve Cram was commentating the race. So that became a big story there. He just missed that. It was 346.32, but Jakob delivered here. Yeah. And it was just like the type of racing that fans of distance running love. You, there was no waiting. There was no like, I got the best kick in the field. It was from the gun. They went out hot and they stuck to that hot pace as long as possible. And the competition did it too. It wasn't just like Jakob doing his own thing. You know, Jake Whiteman, Oliver Hoare, both went with Jakob as long as they possibly could. And mm -hmm. we were just seeing the true best that they had on that day. There was nothing that was left on the table, which is what you like. You saw 346, you saw 347, 350 yeah. from Whiteman, who fell off at the end. Um, but I was just impressed that everyone approach this race the Jakob way and it was going from the gun and let's just see how fit we truly are from mm. all with all 1609 meters yeah if someone didn't know anything about track or mid-distance running and they watched this race i think they'd be pretty excited about it because you wouldn't need to explain anything to them you wouldn't need to say okay why is the seventh guy the seventh best guy actually getting second in this race it just narrowed itself down immediately then it was down to three then it was down to two and then it was down to one. I mean, it was pretty, pretty straightforward in its simplicity. And I think that's what made it captivating. I guess you could throw the time in there as well, too, because that was a fun thing to keep an eye on throughout the race. But yeah, credit to, to Hoare, who he sets the Aussie record, I guess area record, too. So it's an Oceania record for Hoare in second. And then Whiteman, for, he was game for a while there. And even when he looked like he was going to fall off, he didn't fall completely. By the wayside, still got a got a PB in, in 350. But this thing was all about Inga Britson and you know him running at home too. I think added a little bit of a little bit of juice to this race as well. And this race strategy works for him, and it worked for him at pre. It's working for him yeah. here. How crazy? I mean, like not crazy. I don't know what the word I'm trying to say is, but like if Jakob for some reason does not do mm -hmm. this race strategy at the world championships, something's up because right. you know, this works. It's 90% success rate. Mm -hmm. If he goes out at world championships and takes the first lap out in 58, 59, we're going to be like, what yeah. are we doing here? So yeah. Jakob basically has no excuses for not winning the title because he knows if you do this plan on yeah, are in yeah. your favor, people will be with you for the first 1200 meters. But he's the only one right mm -hmm. now who's showing he can extend that pace all the way through four laps complete. Obviously, there's some other great runners out there, Cherry, uh, Kip Sang, and some few others. But yeah, right now, Jakob, if you do this, you will win. Question is, sometimes the lights shine, and all of a sudden you overthink it, and then you're not doing it. And you're like, oh, I got to be yeah. careful. But he should know this is the race plan for success. There's no B idea, C idea, D idea. You do the race plan, letter A. Run from the gun, and no one can go with you. Yeah, it's the office 5K race plan. Start out fast, fast in the middle, fast at the end. Was that Jim who said that? I think it was Jim. Oh, uh, it was Pam. It was Pam to Jim. Pam, Pam okay. Okay, so it's the, it's the Pam Beasley plan is what Jakob's on. Here's the thing I think about it, though. A lot of other guys use that same plan currently. You talk about Chariot. He's a guy who can go from the gun. Horace is a guy who can go from the gun. But... If all of them do that, I'm in agreement with you. Inga Britson wins because he's better at it than they are right now. So in yeah. order to beat him, the rest of the field needs to do something that gets Jakob out of this comfort zone that he's in, which is a very uncomfortable zone to be in for Inga Britson because he's just going hard. So they need, they need, and they're not going to collaborate to do this, but the race needs to unfold in a way that mucks it up just a little bit. I mean, I'm looking at his last, you know, when he lost to Tefera, he was still going hard and leading from the gun, but Tefera was able just to, to latch on and then kick past him. Like they need to do something um, to mix it up, to throw a different look at him, 
not let him dictate and and control the race because I think he's a different runner than he was indoors. And if that similar thing happens, he'll win. And it's a weird thing to say, hey, don't let him lead because ordinarily you'd be like, hey, be my guest, middle distance race. No yeah. one wants to lead. If you're volunteering to lead, everyone's going to be like, hey, Pat, go for it. <laughs> but I almost think it's a weird situation this year where he's really comfortable leading in these races. And I don't think that's that's not a sign of, of oh, uh-oh, he went too soon with him because he just keeps – you saw it again today. He ran from the front in the hard part of the race. 